multifactorial inheritance. Now, many genetic disorders are due to multiple genetic and environmental factors, not to simply a single gene mutation. In fact, multifactorial inheritance is the most common cause of isolated congenital anomalies in newborns, including things like neural tube defects, heart defects, cleft palate, and club foot. Some other common disorders, such as diabetes, autism, and schizophrenia, are also commonly multifactorial. Because there's a genetic predisposition in some cases, recurrence risk for major anomalies is generally 2-6%. to Sometimes we think of traits with multifactorial inheritance as having a threshold. There's an increased susceptibility to these disorders, and in cases who develop the traits, something pushes them over that threshold. That something could be other genetic factors or environmental influences. Now let's discuss some key features of multifactorial inheritance. There is no discernible pattern of inheritance, first of all. Second, recurrence risk increases as more individuals are affected in the family. Recurrence risk also increases if the affected individual belongs to the less commonly affected sex. For example, autism is more common in boys. If a girl develops autism in the family, there's a higher risk that a sibling will also have it. That's because in order for the girl to be affected, there is likely increased genetic or environmental susceptibility that pushed her over that threshold easier. Recurrence risk decreases if the degree of relation of the affected individual decreases. So, for someone with an affected first-degree relative, the recurrence risk is much higher than a second-degree relative. Recurrence risk also correlates with the prevalence in the general population a more common disorder will be more likely to recur than a rare one. And finally, environmental factors play a role. An example of this is folic acid supplementation, which reduces the risk of neural tube defects when taken prior and during early pregnancy. So there you have multifactorial inheritance, which probably applies to the majority of diseases you will study.